Yo, what is up? You have found I Like the Blazers. I am your host, Brandon Goldner. And with me, I have the co-host of the Trailcasters, the beautiful, the daring, the dashing, and the bold, Keith Feller smith What's up, Keith? <laughs> oh, man, that, that was just an old school feeling intro right there, man. I, I haven't heard that in a long time. How you been? I've been good. That's why That's why I screwed up the intro, because I knew I wanted to. I still messed it up. I don't think I got the words in the right order. Um, but yeah, I had ah, to, it was close enough. It was I familiar. Had, <laughs> I had to turn it back on you. Um... Yeah, if you didn't know, Keith, <laughs> Keith co-hosts the Trailcasters with Ty Delbridge. You should definitely check them out. Uh, but what I would like us to check out are a number of different topics, my friend. And one of them is just kind of, I know that we both hit on this in our respective fields, but just your quick feelings on the off season. I mean, today is Friday. The Blazers are playing their first preseason game today. So that's exciting. Morris. We finally have basketball, right? I mean, like it's yeah. been... It's been so long. And also just it's been such a shit year. It's good to yeah. like it's good. it's good to get something. Well, to it's, look. it's yeah, go for it. it. It's been so long, but it's also been so short. Like it was just here, but it's just such a weird feeling because normally when the fall hits, especially up here in Oregon, maybe other parts of the country don't feel it as much if you don't have as many seasons. But up here, when the fall hits, it's basketball time. Yeah. So when the season ended and then you have fall come on, it's like, where's the basketball? Yeah. And honestly, and like how I felt during the bubble for whatever reason, maybe it's cause like, it was like too early into quarantine and stuff. Like I just wasn't super into the basketball, but now I'm like really excited for it. Um, yeah. yeah, we have some preseason to look forward to, but let's look back really quick. The Blazers off season. I just wanted your opinions on how you think that went. Cause you know, they added Robert Covington, Derek Jones, Jr. And his canter. They were able to re-sign Carmelo Anthony and Rodney hood. They were able to get Harry Giles. They Keep got going. rid of Mario. Mazzonia. They got rid all of it. White Give me all of it. I'm out of breath. Ah! And then they had a draft pick, CJ, someone or another, but he's not going to play. CJ Ellaby. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> so with all of that, just kind of what are your feelings on how the Blazers offseason went? Are you thumbs up, thumbs down, feeling good about it? Where are you at? Bro, I, I, if I could put this mic down and grow an extra arm, I would be like three or four or five thumbs up. I Blazers You'd be won like the offseason. Zenyatta from Overwatch, just like yes, multiple. yes. Ex <laughs> oh, great reference. <laughs> um, yeah, man, I'll be full on Zen six thumbs up or however many he has. Uh, look, I understand that. Uh, Blazer fans, obviously, we feel pretty good about this in general, I think. We haven't seen a lot of off-seasons where we've had this much action, let alone across the board, on paper, which is all we really have right now is on paper, across the board, these were good moves. Yeah. You upgraded Ariza to Covington. You upgraded Whiteside to Cantor. You upgraded the, the bench depth. There's so much here, and really, we didn't even have to get rid of that much for it. This is a win for the Blazers. Uh I think even more than that, if you really want to compound it, I'm not trying to take too many of your points either, sir, but just with the number of years that we've sat here waiting and being told by the front office and other people that I'm sure we'll get to as far as, hey, it's coming. Don't worry. You know, we're just setting up for a bigger move kind of thing. Yeah. This seems like it. Fi this might finally be those moves. This might be that year that we've been building up and waiting for as far as Dame's era of just how far can he really take this team? That's how I feel too. And honestly, I was surprised with how, how much Neil Olshay was able to do in this off season. And we actually do have a bullet point to talk about Neil Olshay a little bit later, but I'm with you. I was super happy with this, especially as someone who had been saying like, look, mortgage the future. I don't care. We need to maximize Dame's prime. And I feel like that's what they yes. did. Um, yes, very much so. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. Uh, someone who's not feeling as good is uh, James Harden. Uh, he is flexing. <laughs> He's flexing in oh, Houston. Man. I mean, we've all heard about how he was like partying in New Orleans, and then he went to Vegas. He reported to camp late. He has to undergo extended COVID testing because of that. Um, and the latest reporting from Sham Sharani, I think this was like maybe yesterday, is that Harden has now expanded the list of teams that he may want to go to to four teams. And I wanted your opinion on this, Keith. What do these four teams? teams have in common the four teams are the philadelphia 76ers the brooklyn nets the milwaukee bucks and the miami heat keith what do those four teams happen to have in common well i'm not sure if you're getting to something bigger but i feel like they are all a little east of portland far enough east they would be in the eastern conference we're moving james harden out of the west they're feeling they're pretty far east man like i mean why is he <laughs> running from the western conference that's what's happening i mean what's the western deal? conference he's trying to go, he's trying to uh he's trying to pull a Le reverse lebron where lebron went from the eastern conference to the western conference and james harden wants the easy road here he wants more personal accolades in my opinion honestly and uh, you know 
I wish I had the receipts to really go back on this, but I swear, if we rewind all the way back to when Harden was originally on the Thunder with KD and Russ back in the day, um, he was the first one that left that team, right? Yeah, he yeah. he he departed OKC first, and I remember some I don't remember what the quote was, but he had some line that basically clarified to me that Harden was about that money. What he cares yeah. about is his bag, his fame, his personal glory, nothing else. wasn't about winning, wasn't about teammates or, or or you know anything else that can be like LeBron. Even LeBron's about winning. He's about kind of personal accolades that we see whenever he promotes himself and talks about the hardest championships in the world are the ones I've won. Uh, but he does bigger things too. Harden is only about himself, only about himself. And I just, I, I feel like uh, we're really seeing that bite him in the ass at this point. Uh, I, I, I feel like it's pretty good karma and I, I could not be happier uh, than to see not only the Rockets <laughs> fall apart, but to see Harden. He, look, he's adding these teams to his list. Oh, I don't just want to go to the Nets. I could take a uh, Nets or Philly. And now he's saying Miami or uh, what was the fourth one? The I Bucks, already. which is the Bucks. Yeah, definitely not going to happen, but <laughs> not happening at all. But that's the thing is that they're all Eastern Conference teams and it's like right i i don't really begrudge him maybe I, I think back in okc he was traded but it was because he didn't take an extension there was maybe some stinginess from the gm but yeah he wanted a bigger role and with russell westbrook and durant on that team at the time i kind of don't begrudge him that maybe he wanted a bigger role he became the player that he was but i do think is funny is you know when dwight howard got to houston didn't work out we're like ah oh, dwight howard you know and then chris paul got to houston didn't work out it's like oh, you <laughs> yeah. know, chris paul russell westbrook goes to it's like no there's, <laughs> there's literally one common denominator there's it's one co- yeah exactly so okay uh, yeah and it's oh, yeah, well, let, let me just jump in here just real quick too and yeah you're right he was traded from uh okay so it's not like it was his choice but i swear there was some quotes out there about him saying it wasn't just about the role but to him there what he directly said the contract. I want the money. I want to get the most possible. And look, there's he's a not reason the only why one. the two te- the team and the player couldn't come together. I mean, it was a two way street right. on that. Yeah. 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 And, and I, I get it that it's part of uh, a certain culture and a certain kind of mindset among a lot of people out there, uh, particularly in NBA lifestyle, as far as get that bag and all that. But you got to have other values. You got to have other priorities in there. And when you're so blatant about I want mine and f- forget everything else. So I'm not sure where we're at on uh, on language on this pod. I had to censor myself there. Ah, fuck it. No, you're uh, good. <laughs> oh, yeah. You're like, good. But, uh, when, when he's just saying fuck everything but money. <laughs> well, it's funny. Yeah, uh, when, you, when you upload stuff on like YouTube, they're like, is this made for kids? And every time I'm like, nope. No, it's not. No. <laughs> yeah. I, so... Uh, yeah, but well, here the, the the one other side of this, as far as the teams that he has put on his list, this has been the real joy for me when he first had you're just loving the, every the, minute of this. <laughs> <laughs> I really do, man. He's like my least favorite player. He and Russ, and so to see Houston collapse and Russ went first, and I'm like, oh man, it's coming. Harden is not going to be happy about this. It's coming. And then it came. And I'm like, yeah, it's falling apart. But when he adds each of these Eastern teams to his list, I just feel like he is shooting himself in the foot each time. He has had he has shot himself in the foot four times so far because you're. If you want to go to the Bucks, the Bucks now have the, the Bucks don't have to give as much to get you because they're thinking, hey, he wants to come here. We can kind of leverage that over Houston. Yeah. And Houston on the on the other side is going to say, well, we want to make sure we get value out of this. You're making it harder to get the thing you want by calling it out publicly like that. He thinks he's right. like entitled to just get his piece. He has no leverage here, no player option or nothing. So I'm sorry. I feel like I'm just running over you. But yeah, thank you for bringing up Harden, man. This is a real joy for me so far before basketball has started. <laughs> I can literally see the Schradenfreude just washing over your entire <laughs> soul it's funny though because you use the word leverage and you're right Harden doesn't really have the leverage to decide where to go and Houston has a relatively new owner they have a new GM uh, and given how he's been acting he may not have the organizational equity or goodwill to control where he goes which means the Houston Rockets they don't have to trade him to any of those four teams just like you said they could trade him yeah. to whoever may offer the most and so here's what I wanted to ask you as, as well okay what if James Harden were traded to the Portland don't Trail do it oh, no <laughs> CJ McCollum Anthony oh. Simons picks until 2046 what do you oh, think you'd have to do you so want much more. Harden on this team no I, I absolutely do not want Harden on this team the, the thing for me is not only would you have to give up way more than CJ and Ant to make the contracts work, uh, plus the fact that the Blazers already have 14 people on this roster. I'm not going to get too complex about it because I really don't understand a lot of this myself. It's A lot of it is over my head. But from what I've been what, – what has been explained to me, 
we would have to give up more pieces just to match the contract. And then we have to be getting some pieces back to make sure that we have enough players in the roster. But we also we're already at 14. So you, you, it turns into this thing where you're going to have to give up pieces you care about. You can't just give up these like end of the bench pieces uh, to pick them up. And all of that said, it's a one year rental. Like he has more on his contract after that, uh, more years left. I believe, I think it's two left after this I think it's one. Two, yeah. But man, there is nothing to hold him to Portland. And when we have seen Rodney hood say how much he loves town and he resigned here after there was some concern about that, not from him, but from fans, when we've seen mellow who, Sounds like he had other offers on the table. Chose Portland. When when, we, when Portland has had a reputation for having a hard time with free agents and Dame has done so much to turn that around in his time here, you don't go and then ruin that by bringing in a, someone like Harden who is going to, you know, 99% assuredly leave town after the rental and just leave you with nothing. But, I mean, hey, man, look at what Kawhi took to Toronto and left them with a championship. <laughs> I mean, he was there. For, he didn't want to be there. He was there for a year. Okay. You so know like, what? If, uh, if, if, just, look, like, I, yeah, go for it. If sorry. we had, if we, if, no, you're fine. If we had Kawhi, I can, I can accept being a Toronto fan where it's like, Hey, he may not be a Raptor now, but thank you Kawhi for coming up here. I don't want to do that with Harden. I don't want to be sitting here on one hand, worshiping Dame Lillard and the quality of character and all the kind of other stuff that we uh, praise here in Portland, as far as our, our ideals. And then on the other hand, I'd be like, yeah, James Harden, you sleaziest basketball player that skirts the rules, finds loopholes in every way possible. Uh, and is just like an ugly like you, type of basketball to watch. Yeah, te- yeah, all this stuff. Yeah, let's uh, props to you. I don't want that. I don't want to have to give him credit. I so uh, okay. First of all, it's not going to happen. So the <laughs> right. Blazers are Thank not you. getting Ooh. James Harden. It's just not going to happen. Ooh, I feel better. Thank you, Yeah, Just keep saying that out loud. I feel better. <laughs> but I can't help but imagine Dame is thirty. And when we look at how the Blazers are currently constructed, even as they did get better during this offseason, which they did, is this a title team? You know, I, I don't know if the Blazers have a higher ceiling if you add James Harden and remove the necessary players and contracts in order to fit him on the team. But I will say it would be super, super interesting. There's no denying how amazing of a scorer he is. There's also no denying that, like you said, the Blazers culture would collapse in on itself like a neutron star. (laughs) And I just think it would be fascinating if this were a video game and not just 2K, but if like if you had like a simulation of life and you could see all the human elements and the personalities and stuff, I would love to see this simulated and see what happens. I, the yeah, whole network know, of like all the moving pieces. Listen, the, the thing is, you mentioned with he and Dame too. We, well, you, you said it earlier. We saw when Dwight Howard came to town, and 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 left. We saw when Chris Paul then came in. Like, oh man, this is someone who should fit next to uh, Harden. He, he, his whole thing is distribution. He should work great with this. And then left. Russ, former teammate, all the language about yeah, we love playing together. We, we you know thinking oh this is chemistry that will finally work. Two guys who are MVP level players. Russ left as quick as he could. I don't want uh, trying to trying to play Dame and Harden next to each other. I feel like is trying to put a positive and negative end of a magnet next to each other and thinking that it's not going to just fly opposite directions as fast as it can. It, I mean, it probably would be a shit show, but <laughs> the, the one difference would be that Houston was unequivocally Harden's team. Portland is unequivocally Damian Lillard's team. Signed, sealed, and delivered. There you think is, Harden would be okay with that? No, but I don't think. See, that's the thing. It's like. There you go. I don't think that there is a player in the league that could come play in Portland and make Damian Lillard not the franchise player if he were still on this team. I don't even, I don't think you could put LeBron here and have that happen. I, I don't think you put Giannis here and have that happen. Even if those two players are better than Damian Lillard, which those two players are, Damian Lillard is inextricably, inextri- in, in extri- what is the word I'm looking for? Connected with... Inextricably, doubly? Something yeah, like sorry. that. Um, <laughs> I can't think of the word. He is connected inextricably. with... Inextricably. That's close enough to me. So close, yeah. <laughs> Damian Lillard is connected with the fiber of this franchise and this fan base in a way that cannot be dislodged, even by someone like James Harden. And so, I, again, like, I think it would be a shit show, but it would be fascinating to me. Um... Just to repeat, James Harden's not coming to Portland, so don't worry about it. Ooh. Slash, don't get your hopes yeah. up. Um, <laughs> so pivoting a little bit from players to general managers, Neil Olshay. Um, I wanted to ask you about this because you know Neil Olshay is now operating under the leadership of a different owner, right? It's Jody Allen now, no longer Paul Allen. Um, 
And Jody Allen has a different ownership style than Paul did. And Olshay said as much during a recent press conference. He was talking about how Jody Allen really cares to set the big picture 30,000 foot frame and planning of the team and then have old Shea and the rest of the organization follow that where Paul really liked to get into details. We both know how much he loved his draft picks and his point guards. And I think I was talking about it with Evan McCarthy on a pod a, a couple weeks ago, like the Nolan Smiths of the world. And you know, the just right? the, the different players that we knew were kind of like, you know, Paul Allen picks um, so many small guards, so many small <laughs> guards. But with that, you know, do you think that having a different owner has changed Neil Olshay's approach to the moves that the Blazers have made in the last year or two? Like, do you think that Olshay would have made different moves had he still been operating under Paul Allen rather than Jody? That is an interesting question, man. It's hard not to think that it's a factor. It's it's uh, since we know Paul Allen was such an active owner and we saw such a trend year after year of, of a certain kind of draft, certain kind of draft target, I guess would be the best way to put it. Cause it's not like they only drafted small guards, but there was definitely a type of player where if they were available, you kind of knew Blazers were looking at him. Nolan Smith, I think is the, the perfect example. I, I can't think of anyone else who comes off the top of my head. Uh, because some of these names you try to forget, <laughs> like where a lot of them tend to be players that Portland attaches to maybe, uh, whether that's partly from the team forcing the narrative or if fans actually care about them. But yeah, a lot of these dudes just underperform because I think Paul Allen or the front office at the time was trying to fit a certain, a, a, sorry, sorry, a certain formula. Um, but at this point, yeah, when you see the roster this year, like let's say, I think going into this uh, this season, there were two kind of big questions about the roster. It was a backup guard, a backup ball handler, uh, and front court depth. The back, uh, backup ball handler is still possibly a question. Depends on how much you believe in Anthony Simons versus CJ. If you can stagger Damon and CJ or play them together, all these options. But the front court and, and you know, like the front court and the wings. I think you and I talked about the wings a bunch on previous episodes of Trailcasters back in the day. That is handled. We have those things covered and and twice over at this point with quality uh, players, not just like not your uh, your Mario Hazonia or your like. Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to be too NBA rude to Aaron to follow, but. Depth. Yeah, 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 legit depth. Where it's just there's so much more on this roster. I've been I've been talking a bunch with different people this last week about is this the best roster that Blazers have had under Damian Lillard? And I think the other one that has come up the most has been the Dame Wes. Nick Batum, Aldridge, uh, Rolo lineup at the time though, not only did that roster, when Wes injured himself and the had to step up, that kind of changed everything. But beyond that, the bench on that team was pretty atrocious. Uh, and I, I feel like it, I feel like it'd be hard to argue otherwise that this isn't the best team we've had in Portland in Dame's timeline. It's definitely the deepest. And you just, you just said why. And I think that's going to be extra important. This has actually come up in the last two podcasts I've had that particularly in this season with a 72 game scheduled that is compressed with the overwhelming possibility that teams are going to lose games due to COVID and injury that having, having a team where you can run 11 deep with NBA players that the Blazers have now is going to be disproportionately helpful in a season like this one that in seasons yeah. past. And I'm with you. I do think this is the deepest team the Blazers have ever had. And then arguably the most talented, maybe not starting five wise, but definitely in the rotation. And you also said it too, just kind of top a, to a, bottom, yeah. Top to bottom. Evaluating Neil Olshay under this new ownership. You know, Danny LaRue of the Dunked On podcast has joked about Neil Olshay being allergic to wings, right? And that finally, <laughs> in him and Nate Duncan's evaluation of the Blazers offseason, they had to give Olshay credit. They actually got some wings, right? So lots of wings, lots of wings, <laughs> just so many chicken wings. Do you think, do you think that Neil Olshay, do you think he should, he should be judged differently based on the moves that we're seeing now? Because perhaps under this new ownership, maybe what we're seeing is like a new unvarnished, undistilled version of Neil Olshay and his vision of how oh. to build around Dame. Like, do you think that maybe Olshay should be graded differently, evaluated differently now that he has a little bit more freedom? It's tough, man. Uh, Cause you're not wrong. I know how Everything much you saying... love Neil O'Shea. <laughs> <laughs> like it's, it's sometimes it is hard. I, I, I try to be flexible. I try to be open to change and evolving as a person, growing as a person as I learn more about everything around me in the world. But 
trashing all Shea for some of the moves he's made has been, it, that's really hard to move away from. I, I will definitely say this offseason has been his best uh, with the Blazers franchise. Do I want to give him all that credit though? I, what you're pointing out though, as far as like uh, basically saying that Paul Allen, uh, I don't want to, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of like restrained him from making some of the moves he wanted to make. I don't think that's even wrong, but I also don't know. Look, I, the other thing we've heard from all Shea for years is that, he was always building up towards like, oh, we're, we're kind of like biding time and kind of building up to a season when we can really have flexibility. And if this season works, you're going to hear lots from Olshay and, and the front office that this was that season they've been building up for. So how much of this was the plan all along versus how much of it is like you're saying the ownership changed and now he can finally do what he wanted to do the whole time. If he tries to say that, I'm going to call bullshit. Like this was not <laughs> a season. And to, look, to his credit, like this was not a season where they had a ton of flexibility and yet the Blazers made a number of really solid moves. Like, again, like I am legitimately impressed. I I've said, you know, this does change my view of Olshay a little bit. And I am it does watching. A little, yeah. yeah. I am watching carefully, particularly from this moment on. If he continues making solid moves, I'm going to wonder whether Paul Allen, you know, was as much as he loved this team, I wonder if maybe his insistence that he be in on some of the decision making if maybe that wasn't the right thing after all which may be well, blasphemous and, but just a thought well and let's be clear yeah i don't think it's blasphemous to say that anyone is flawed uh like all you're saying is that paul allen, i mean i'm paul perfect, allen had a flaw <laughs> definitely not <laughs> the, the the point here being that like paul allen was a great owner in many many ways he he did undeniable things for the franchise, even just keeping them here in Portland when that was a question for a while. Oh, yeah. uh, but yeah. look, let's let's look at uh, Dallas. Let's look at the Mavericks. Mark Cuban, again, another fantastic owner overall, in my opinion. Is he perfect? Has he made mistakes regarding uh, gender roles? I, I'm sorry, not the right. The, the staff, I guess, uh, and, and appropriate gender etiquette in uh, the front office down there in Dallas? No, he's not been perfect, but... Overall, I don't think we're going to look back on him because of that one thing and say, what a horrible owner. So I don't think we should look at Paul Allen either and say just because he had an affinity for small guards that uh, it was about, look, we got Damien here eventually. So he got it right sooner or later. Yeah. And I mean, because again, I'm, I'm going to I'm going to stick with that. Olshay did not draft Dame. No, that he was definitely in, in that offseason. He, he walked yeah. into that. And that was already. He did. Yeah. Um, yeah, I we'll see. I mean, I'm I, I just think it's an interesting thing to think about. And as we move, you know, towards the middle of this season, if the Blazers do or don't do anything, and, and kind of next season, if maybe Olshay should be graded a little bit differently. Uh, let's go to he, some... he definitely has earned a little bit of a pass. How about that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I sorry, think, sorry, I don't mean. No, to you're off. good. I I think I mean as a minimum, as someone you know, I have not been a huge supporter of the Olshay specifically in his his uh, personnel moves, right? And right. I need to give him credit for what he did in this off season. And I'm super excited to see how it all pans out. Um, and hopefully it works out. Okay. And kind of related to that, we have games coming up. I wanted to get to some Woo! predictions. Here we go. Woo! Right. I wanted to get to some predictions for the regular season, but I'm going to call an audible really quick. Cause there is a game tonight. I think yes. I'm going to be able to get this out quick enough. Uh, I think it's in four hours. The Blazers are playing the Kings in what I think is a nationally televised preseason game. Do I have that right? Which is, I believe it is. Yeah. Which is bizarre on both counts that it's a preseason game and that it's against the Kings and it'd be nationally televised. Um, just a quick, dirty prediction on today tonight's preseason game. And then we'll get into the first two regular season games. So Blazers versus Kings. Who you got? It's the it's the Hassan Whiteside revenge game. Oh boy! <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Uh, it is the Hassan Whiteside revenge game. I I'm feeling pretty good about Blazers here, though. I know we've heard that Nurk and Zach and uh, there was one other. Oh, Nasir, Nasir Little uh, are sitting out tonight. So yeah, you you lose a little bit there. But I am so you you mentioned it's the Hassan Whiteside revenge game. In my mind, it's the Harry Giles revenge game. Uh, I think Harry Giles is going to be real. I'm really excited to see what he can do tonight. And honestly, I would love to see him get half the minutes at center tonight. Like, Cantor is going to be there. Nurk is not. We don't need Cantor to overplay. We know what he has. If you get Giles 24-ish minutes and really see what he can give us, man, that that could just – we're talking about Blazer depth. That gives you even more in the yeah. front court. He's looked good in practice and and actually maybe Very. maybe more than that. I mean, he played legit minutes last season for the Kings. I mean, he was 
starting for you know a, a dozen or two dozen games and was able to handle 30-ish minutes a game and looked good so yeah I'm I'm interested to see Giles too um I I actually think that kind of an aside I think Harry Giles has a real shot at bumping Zach Collins out of the rotation especially because we know that's a thing yeah well because Collins isn't going to be back until early next year anyway and I think if if Giles establishes himself he has a chance to to kind of bump him out a bit yeah I have the Blazers winning this game too although you know they are without Nurk, and they're they're fitting in a lot of new pieces, right? The Derek Jones Jr., Robert Covington, Cantor, um, Hood is going to be back. I think is Hood. I think he's scheduled to play tonight on a minutes limit, I, which I, I, I'm playing? not sure. I feel like I actually might have heard he's not playing because I, okay. I, I said Nasir a little, but I felt like there was a fourth player, and so it's uh, it might be Hood, uh, Nurk. Yeah, I, I think Hood is all sitting out. If they're just, I think, probably trying to bring him back slow. Again, we've got the yeah. wing depth. We don't need him in here immediately. And if anything, you just want to kind of give him time to acclimate. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned uh, Harry Giles over Collins. I'm totally with you on that. I'm I'm not out on Collins yet, but he has shown a propensity for injuries, unfortunately. And he even when he's been on the floor, he hasn't been the best at staying on the floor as far as foul trouble goes. And I do almost feel like Harry Giles, similar age uh, and, you know, a different skill set a little bit, but just a very talented young big. He might just kind of be that Zach Collins insurance. If, this, you know, if, if he shows out this year and Zach Collins doesn't, that might be kind of the a change in course a little bit. I mean, remember the Harry Giles who, who also has a history of injuries himself, but he was like, yeah, it's not wrong. He, he was like the top high school prospect coming out. Right. I mean, he has, but had slash has legitimate star potential. I think if you were looking at a best case scenario for someone who had pretty serious injuries, look at Michael Porter Jr. and how he's been developing in Denver, right? Like he was playing legit minutes near the end of last season and Denver's pretty high on him, right? And so, you know, I'm not going to expect anything from Giles. If we do get something from him, I think it's a huge bonus. But look, he looked good last year. He's been looking good in practice. So, you know, one can hope. Uh, Okay, so we both had the Blazers winning this preseason game tonight against the Kings. Let's move to the first two regular season games. I I think what I'm going to try to do this year I had created a little spreadsheet for the Blazers rotations, and I think I'm now going to oh, add. Okay. Yeah, I know it's it's. By the way, when you have that many players who all kind of deserve minutes, it's very difficult to shuffle everyone <laughs> around in the different positions, and you get to well, if I take minutes from Trent Jr. and then they don't go to Mello, but then what about Simons? And it's a it's a weird puzzle. But with that, I think I'm going to add the entire NBA schedule and just have a prediction from myself and a guest on the pod and just see kind of who wins at the end of the year, who gets closest to the actual result, uh, Brandon or the guest. So um, (laughs) you are helping to pilot this. So we're going to talk about the first two regular season games. The first one is on the 23rd against the Jazz, and the second one is on the 26th against the Rockets. Both of those are at home in Portland. So a little background on on the Jazz, and we'll talk about that one. Uh, So Donovan Mitchell signed a five-year deal, right? He made the all-star team last year. Uh, Utah still has Rudy Gobert. They have Mike Conley, who was super disappointing and maybe past his prime. Uh, Boyan Bogdanovich, Jordan Clarkson, and then they also got Derek Favors, who's back after taking a year off in New Orleans. We know that Utah blew a three-one lead to the Clippers <laughs> or to the uh, wait, to, you, to the Nuggets last you, week. You, yeah. Sorry, sorry, you got me. You got me there. You said Derek Favors took a year off. I'm like, wait, he was out of the league, and you, you, it was in New Orleans. New Orleans. I, <laughs> I get the joke now. I see what you did there, but I was yeah. like, wait, Derek Favors was out. Why uh, did we yeah, pick him up? Damn. Took a little vacation uh, with our homie Evan M in New Orleans. Uh, and Utah, <laughs> out. Yeah, shout out. Uh, Utah blew that three-one lead uh, to the Nuggets last year in the playoffs because right. the Nuggets had two series which they came down from uh, being down 3-1. So this game's going to be in Portland. And one kind of a a little anecdote to share before I ask your prediction, Um, Donovan Mitchell said that the Jazz need to hold themselves to a high standard. Uh, Quote, you know, we blew a 3-1 lead. We lost in the first round. There's no time for that. There's no time for slow starts, end quote, which makes me think that Utah will be taking this game seriously. So... The game is in Portland. It's against a good team. Uh, Keith, who comes out on top of this game, Blazers or the Jazz? Well, Donovan is right. There is no time for slow starts, and that's something we've heard a lot here in Portland for a number of years as well. Uh, Oh, have we? And I don't don't think we can afford to start slow either, man. So being – I, I get that both teams are, are going to be fired up for this. I think it's a great way to start the season is a game where both teams are saying this matters right off the bat. Uh, 
but it's a home opener for us. We have an amazing record on our home openers. Our roster is deeper, like we've said already. Dame is a better version of Donovan, in my opinion, and Nurk is a better version of Gobert. I'm not saying you know, that one's a little Ooh. harder to compare. I, I, I get the, the defensive skill set is a little different, but I would take Nurk over Gobert if you're giving me just a choice of centers to build a franchise on. I would I would take Nurk on it, man. That's another uh, podcast. Look, That's interesting. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> look, even let me just tease it with this, too. At the very least... You got to factor in, if we're talk, talking roster depth here, I want to also look not only in the beginning of the season at the start here, but all season, what I think is really going to matter is team chemistry. And if there's one team that can just say we have chemistry on a lock, it's the Blazers. One team who can't say that would be Utah, who had Rudy, Rudy Gobert essentially started the NBA's uh, perspective on COVID with, with the way that whole interview went. Yeah. And then the drama that you had between he and uh, Donovan, there was a lot of talk for a while. Could That's they even point. continue to be teammates together? So I, I'm not saying they haven't repaired that guys can move on. We, we can, you know, these are two young athletes. I'm sure they've kind of had their piece together and gone back on the court, but that's not the same chemistry that Blazers have. So I, I feel like that's just one more advantage we have here for our home opener. I'm giving that to the Blazers. That's a good point. I, I had forgotten about that. And yeah, I mean, once a kerfuffle between teammates gets to the point where the public knows about it, it's not great. Uh, I'm going to I'm gonna put you on the spot. I'm going to need a score from you. I'm going to need a oh, score Oh, I like here. it. And it, you know, okay. thinking about, yeah, I mean, obviously you don't have to stress it too much, but like if the Blazers win, like what do you think the score might be? Okay. So okay, if this, my, here, if, 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 if this it, was further down the season, okay, go ahead, go ahead. I, my <laughs> my prediction for this game is that the Blazers do win. I have the Blazers winning one hundred four to ninety six. So that's that's. Oh boy, that is super close to what I was thinking in my head, honestly. Because I, I was I was thinking if this is later on in the season, I could see like a one fifteen one hundred eight kind of feel or something like that. It's not going to be a large gap in the. It never is with Portland. We never win by large gaps because that's just not the way we play. I almost feel like they want to. It's like when you have like a little brother and you want to kind of keep them entertained. So you're like, oh, no, come on, <laughs> grab it, grab it, and then tug. And like, oh, I'm still winning, but go ahead, grab it again. Uh, and sometimes that bites us in the ass a little bit. Um, you know what's a better analogy for that, honestly, is the way my my puppy plays. Because he'll you, you're trying to train him, like get him to drop something, and you give it to him, and then he's like, oh, yeah, you want this? Then runs down the hall the other direction with it. <laughs> he thinks he's winning. He thinks he's winning, and most of the time he might be. But sometimes I, as that opposing team, can come back and get that toy from him and steal that W. Uh, if this is all still making sense uh, in a Blazers perspective, perspective then good on you for following along <laughs> feel like but i just yeah, took a tab that... of acid but i love it <laughs> <laughs> so anyway uh, as far no, as the good, score for that, that game analogy. i appreciated it <laughs> over I, i'm saying blazers you said 104.96 yeah. on on jazz yeah. i'm gonna go prices right on you i'm gonna say 105.98 105.98 okay great uh we're locking it in Psh! all right <laughs> so we both have the blazers winning that home opener against utah so then we move to the Blazers playing the Rockets again in Portland. And I just, I mean, we love talking about the Rockets, right? They lost Westbrook. They're <laughs> probably going to lose Harden. And maybe he's not traded by the beginning of the season, but it's certainly possible. Oh, um, interesting point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Remember the Blazers stole Robert Covington uh, from the Rockets. Yoink. And the Rockets did pick up Christian Wood, who had a nice year in Detroit, a good young piece, um, not a star by any means, but, you know, he's a good player. And the Rockets also lost their general manager, Daryl Morey. They lost their head coach, Mike D'Antoni. They have a rookie coach in Steven Silas, and God bless Steven Silas. He has – that is a tough Poor gig. guy, man. It's a tough gig to walk into. Um, and the Rockets, they have, you know, the ghost of Boogie Cousins, and they have John Wall. <laughs> um and we look at what they Forgot did last. Boogie. Yeah, I know. Ooh. If you look at what they did last year, and again, this team, the Rockets, is going to look much different than they did in the playoffs. Unlike the Jazz, that the Jazz have a decent amount of continuity. The Rockets don't. But remember that the Rockets beat the Thunder in seven before losing in five to the Lakers. But this franchise is a goddamn dumpster fire. Okay, so <laughs> what is what is your prediction? I couldn't be happier. I it's. As someone who has just not cared for the Rockets or James Harden at all for a long time, I also feel just that that Schadenfreude is probably the best word for it. Um, There's literally only one franchise in the entire NBA that I would love to see burned down more than the Rockets. There's only one. Which one? You know who that is. Who is it? It's the Lakers. Oh, okay. Come on. How, how could you not want the Lakers, man? Like, <laughs> I it's the, like the, LeBron, the, the biggest though. rivalry. I, 
Yeah. Oh, I, I, yeah. I, I respect the hell out of LeBron, but the rest of the team yeah. and the rest of what the they franchise. stand for, even down to the purple and gold uniforms and what that symbolizes, I'm totally against everything they are. So yeah. The, the Lakers <laughs> fans are the worst. I mean, they really are. Yeah. Oh my God. The bandwagoniest of the most bandwagon. Um, okay. So the Rockets. Uh, what do you think? Again, this game is in Portland. We kind of went through where they are. Do you think the Blazers picked this up or do you think the Rockets picked this up? And let's hear a score from you, too. <laughs> oh, oh, this is uh, like this one I can comfortably put in the like e- we're saying like I wanted to go 115 with the game against Jazz and couldn't quite do it. I would say right off the bat, like 120 and Rockets be Rockets be happy if they get triple digits. I, I, I would be honestly not that surprised if you see them go below. I'm not saying Christian Wood is bad. John Wall he'll be ready even if Harden is there with them that was that's probably the one way this game is closer is if Harden is still there but even then man it's like I feel like that team I don't know how Harden can play basketball with the rest of them when he's been so clear that he wants out and not just clear that he wants out like where the rest of the team the rest of the players would be against him this dude is not only not showing up for his job like not showing up to training camp as a millionaire athlete he's getting like but, uh, all the photos at the club, uh, the birthday for a little baby and all this, he's not hiding at all. He's not being ashamed of this. I feel like if he went into practice, you wouldn't just have the issue of Christian Wood or other players not wanting to be with him. He doesn't want to be with any of them. This isn't his yeah. team anymore. He wants out. So, I mean, man, in that sense, maybe it's almost better if he plays, uh, if he stays on the Rockets for that first game against <laughs> us. That'd be kind of nice. Like, one more chance to just really boo him in the Rockets uniform. Uh Hey, and you know what else? If we need icing on the cake here, this is one of the few games where we have two days off between games. Almost the whole rest oh, of the yeah. season, it's every other day or back-to-back. But the Jazz opener is on the 23rd, and this is on the 26th. So we're coming in rested uh, and and you know freshly uh, awoken off of that win over the Jazz. I feel like this is going to be a good spot for the Blazers. We're going to be 2-0 before the schedule gets a little tougher. <laughs> I like it. Uh I'm going to need to hear a number, though, on the Rockets, though. Oh, right, right. The Blazers score. 120, yeah. Rockets what? Uh, you know, they, they, they might get up near the triple digits, so we'll go 98 again. All right, 98 for both the first two opponents, and that, that could happen. I like it. Uh, I went even further than you. I So I'm in my score prediction. This one's probably going to ruin the rest of the average, but I'm assuming that Harden is moved pretty quickly. His yeah, trade value likely. is not – I mean, the, the offers that the Rockets are getting that they're not telling anybody about that are not being leaked to the press, those offers are not going to get any better between now and when. They're just not. I mean, he has two years left on his contract. Like, this is not like I have three well, we months left. we want KD left. or Kyrie. Right. Like, this, like <laughs> so I have a sense that the Rockets are going to trade him relatively quickly. So I'm assuming he's gone. So my score is Blazers 125, Rockets 89. So that would be oh, like I love it. an unbelievable, you know, Ant Simons is playing 30 minutes in this game. So it's like yes. garbage time from yes. the beginning of the third quarter. So that's where I'm going to Give me another Ant Simons game. Like, like, give me another game like what Ant had against the Kings the end of the last season, uh, like the season before. You know, God, time is weird at this point. It's really hard to tell. Like, what was a year ago? <laughs> I can't, don't know. Uh, oh, but, yeah, give me another one of those Ant Simons games. That would be awesome. I'm getting those, like, you know, those reminders on Instagram or Facebook where it's like three years ago or two years ago. It's like right. one, one year ago. Like, what? Like, it, it's, what? <laughs> it is odd. You know what else, though? You know what else with this game? Uh the Rocco revenge game. We mentioned Whiteside and oh, Harry yeah, Giles right. last time, uh, or for the preseason uh, with Whiteside and Harry Giles. But yeah, the Rocco revenge game, man. He got uh, moved off the Rockets. I mean, maybe he doesn't feel too badly about it down there, but I feel like if, if anything, if he likes being up here, if he's feeling it in Portland, he's going to want to show out against his former team. So yeah, let's see that giant gap. Like I would love to see a, a 30 point win at the start of the season for the Blazers. That'd be awesome. Oh man. It'd be so much fun. Um, well, I'm looking forward to the preseason game tonight and just for basketball to start up again. Was there anything else you wanted to hit before we bounce? I'm good, man. Thanks so much for having me on here. It's good to good to see you again and good to kind of stretch the legs, get back into podcasting after a crazy, crazy COVID summer. Yeah, I was looking at the uh, the back end of the podcast feed and seeing just the gap in the podcast I've been doing too, and it is just like <laughs> whoa. Um, but man, if if anyone wanted to check out your work with the Trailcasters or just hit you up on Twitter uh, and make fun of you for your various predictions, how would people do that? Always come and contact me. Always ask me questions or make fun of me for all of my takes. Uh, I'm very open to being made fun of. I'm very much a homer, and I do not hide it. Uh, you can find me at Rip City Keith. 
can find the Trailcasters at Trailcasters, and you can also email us at trailcasters at gmail.com. We take all the questions, all the conversations, always good to talk basketball and Blazers. Rad. Keith, appreciate you. Thanks, man. Appreciate you, Brandon. Have a good day. Thank you once again to Keith Feltner-Smith of the Trailcasters. It's always good to catch up with him. And if you want to catch up with us, you can do that at ilikeTheBlazers.com or you can find us on Twitter or Facebook at ilikeTheBlazers. You can also send us emails at ilikeTheBlazers at gmail.com. Another fun episode. I appreciate all of you for listening, and I am excited for basketball to start. So until next time, thank you all again, and go Blazers. Go Blazers.